House lawmakers must agree on raising the national debt ceiling today or the U.S. could default on its debt as soon as June. Treasury Secretary Janet Yellen warns that that could set off a financial crisis. The U.S. has never defaulted on its debt, which is currently more than $31 trillion. Democratic Congressman Jim Clyburn spoke to our Bob Costa about the negotiations. I do believe uh, that you ought to always be willing to make compromises. But you can't not compromise your principles. You cannot compromise the full faith and credit of the United States of America. And on principle, Democrats are not going to agree to anything that would jeopardize Social Security, Medicare, these kinds of issues that are there when the American people, they pay into Social Security. They pay into Medicare. All right, Gina Smilek joins us now to talk a little bit more about the economic fallout that could be on the way. She is a Federal Reserve and economy reporter for the New York Times. Um, so, Gina, it's you know, my first question has to do with if lawmakers fail to strike a deal, what are the ways in which it could derail the U.S. economy? But it's like even if they, even if we don't get to that point, just the fear of not striking a deal could also have implications. Right, absolutely. And we certainly saw that back in 2011, which is a previous example of one of these sort of episodes of extreme brinkmanship. Back then, we saw markets really take a hit as we approached that debt limit ceiling, um, sort of that that X date when we can't pay the bills anymore. And, you know, we could see a rerun of that. Most of my market contacts are telling me that they think the real pain will come if we actually cross that threshold into default. And that could be a really painful experience, A, because the government is not paying some of its bills. So just all of that money is temporarily kind of being sucked out of the economy. And B, because like I mentioned previously, stocks are likely to just absolutely plummet in that situation. And that will obviously come at a cost to American households and businesses and, and just really sort of gum up the workings of the economy. Gina, there's one thing, though, that Anne-Marie and I were talking about earlier, um, which is that what's unique about this particular situation is that we might see infighting amongst Republicans to get this over the finish line rather than traditionally what we've seen in the past is Democrats and Republicans going right. toe to toe because of some of the concessions that House Speaker Kevin McCarthy has made to the more extreme members of his party. So what could that look like? Nancy Cordes, our White House uh, correspondent, explained that because the president obviously controls the executive branch and has the Senate, they're going to stand firm. But could you see Republicans, for example, moderate Republicans signing on to uh, Democrat proposals? Yeah, absolutely. And a lot of the optimism for some sort of deal basically hinges on that possibility. I think that some of the rules changes in the House make that potentially more contentious than it otherwise would be, you know, in order to win the speakership. Uh, Representative McCarthy had to agree to some pretty uh, serious rule changes. And I think that what we've already seen is that there's some disagreement among Republican members of, over exactly what their priorities are. You know, they've been pretty clear that they don't want to pass a clean debt limit. They don't want to just increase the without attaching some sort of future, you know, future stipulations to it. Um, but I don't think we have a really clear idea of what those stipulations precisely are. We've heard some different things from different members. And so I think the infighting story is already in its early innings and is likely to become more intense as we move through this process. Right. And that's why some investors are a little nervous. Yes, we've, talk we've talked about this many, many times over the years that we've worked together. Yes, they always play this game of chicken. And then eventually, you know, it works out. But because of the current circumstances in the House right now, investors are a little nervous right. about those who may dig in their heels because they do not want the government spending any more money or going into debt. Um, but let's talk about a similar situation that happened, you know, just two years ago. Big investors and bank, bank economists, they're using financial models to predict when the U.S. will run out of cash. What have we learned from previous instances? Right. So basically what all of Wall Street is doing right now is trying to game out whether this is going to turn into an actual sort of fight to the very last moment kind of disaster. And if that happens, if there's a risk of an accident. So when you talk to most investors today, they're not that worried that anybody's going to intentionally push America into default. What they're worried about is 
people taking too long to come to an agreement and just doing the math wrong, basically, and accidentally ending up in a situation where we default. And so we've heard this over and over from investors. We're hearing from my colleague, Joe Renison, who's our markets reporter, um, was hearing from some of his contacts that people are starting to ask about sort of default insurance contracts, basically, uh, on government bonds, which is crazy. That doesn't usually happen. And so we are seeing some real heightened concern on Wall Street, I think. But so then the question, of course, becomes, is there any kind of contingency plan? And, and the reality is that the United States, and I, 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 you can fact check me on this, but I, I don't believe, at least in the modern era, the United States has ever defaulted on its debt. Uh, the dollar is backed by the full faith and credit of the United States. It's the most stable currency in the world, um, which is why many other countries peg their currencies to ours. So is there a real risk here or is it just good fodder for the media? It's a good way for congressmen and women to raise money by saying, look, I'm trying to you know, stick to my guns when it comes to economic policy, but are we really at the precipice? Yeah, I actually think there's a real danger that people think that there isn't a risk and think that this is just fodder because mm. there are some contingency plans. There are things that the government could do to stave off an actual default on government bonds. But when you talk to former officials, they'll say those are bad plans. Mm. And I've talked to former officials from both sides of the aisle over the last week. And they're like, yes, absolutely. We've done contingency planning. This has happened so many times that we've had to think about what would happen if we went to default. And what we've concluded is it would be an unmitigated disaster. Like this would go very badly. And so I think that's really the message that I had heard just kind of across the aisle. You know, everybody I talked to who is really familiar with these issues was pretty, you know, pretty consistent on that idea that this would be really bad news. It could end up sort of saddling the United States with a diminished global reputation and permanently higher higher borrowing costs when it wants to, you know, raise money to spend on something. But and Gina, you make it the point that I, I guess what I'm hearing and I think what people need to understand is even if you support a fiscal, uh, even if you're fiscally conservative, as some lawmakers are, the repercussions of what you're describing will affect people in your district. You, If you are representing a district that is economically struggling, what we're talking about here will have a greater effect on those individuals than, for example, people who can insulate themselves right. from the turmoils that the markets will see in the wake of this. And I think it's important to note, and you almost can't say it enough, that the debt limit is about spending we have already That's decided right. That's to an excellent point. Not new spending. Mm -hmm. And so I think sometimes that gets a little muddied here. You know, this is this is about things that are already authorized. It's not about new spending. That's a great excellent point. point. Uh, Gina Smilek, thank you very much.